Hello everyone and welcome back on BlockGems. On BlockGems we talk about what is going on in the non-fungible tokens space and today we're going to talk about marble cards. We're going to discuss a little bit how it works, what it entails, how to collect marble cards uh, and uh, all the quirks and features of this uh, uh, project. So if you enjoy this kind of content please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. So first of all what is marble cards? Marble cards can be defined in different ways, but the way I see it is a, a trading cards game, which a very strong, a very interesting collectible aspect of it. Uh, so um, the main idea behind marble cards is that every URL is unique in the sense that every URL is unique for a given web page and that you could, uh, and you can actually, thanks to marble cards, uh, mint a token that is connected with a particular uh, specific URL. So basically, uh, for every URL that is out there, you could have a token, an NFT in, uh, in this case. And this is exactly the concept that stands behind uh, marble cards. So uh, another reason that uh, um, I wanted to, um, to bring to your attention is that uh, this is not a mainstream project. Uh, this project runs on the Matic, blockchain if you look here in uh, one of these rankings that i always show you this is uh, not exactly uh, at the top of this list uh, it's not against rivals such as nba top shots or crypto banks it's more down the line here um, and uh, it doesn't even run on the ethereum blockchain as mentioned before it runs on matic which is a uh, layer two uh, blockchain. It is uh, strictly connected to Ethereum, but it is not the same thing. So uh, it is supposed to solve many of the problems that Ethereum has, including high transaction fees, uh, including uh, long waiting time. But most of what they do is still uh, in development, it's still a big promise because the adoption is not even near the one that we can see on Ethereum. So there is this uh, niche aspect with marble cards that you wouldn't see, you wouldn't have, for instance, for crypto, crypto banks uh, or for Avastars, for instance, which run on a much larger uh, and more known, more widely adopted uh, blockchain. So uh, how does marble cards work? Uh, there are many ways that I could approach this, but from the collecting, from the collectible standpoint, from, so from the collector's point of view, how uh, does it work? Imagine that I go on uh, motor1.com uh, and I find this uh, beautiful uh, page that talks about uh, uh, Alfa Romeo 4C and I'm a fan of Alfa Romeos and I want to have an NFT that uh, makes uh, this URL unique. In other words, that creates a token for this specific URL that I can then uh, exchange, send to someone, transfer, sell, or even keep for myself as a collectible. Basically a collectible that does represent this page. Although it is not this page, it has nothing to do with Motor1 or nothing to do with the publisher of this, but it is a unique collectible that in some shape or form points to it and represents it. How, how can I do this using marble cards? Uh, I can go on uh, uh, marble cards, uh, marble.cards, uh, cards actually, and I should connect my MetaMask wallet to the application. What is important here is that to access this application, uh, to start using it, you need to connect in using the Matic network. You cannot just connect it to Ethereum and ask it for it to work. It's never going to work. You need to connect it to the Matic network. You need to set up your wallet for it to support it. Uh, so I will put a link in the description below for you to learn how to do it. Uh, there is, the guide is very, very small. It takes a second to set it up, but it does require an additional setup within your MetaMask wallet. It's not so automatic. And then Imagine that, as mentioned, I wanted to to buy, sorry, to mint uh, this uh, this marble card. I can paste the uh, address here and check the 
availability of that specific URL. I want to do this together with you guys so that I show you what happens after that moment. So here we are checking if that card is available. And as we can see, we have this score on your card. It means this card is available. Hence, we can mint this token. We can produce this card and, and, and associate a unique NFT with the URL that I proposed, that I have included here. So um, it is important to read what it's written here. If we sell the card, we take 30% of the profit. If the card does not sell, we, we win the card. What does this mean? The moment that we create this card, and it doesn't cost much, it costs five magics at the time of recording, it's like 2.5 euro, five dollars. Uh, the moment we start uh, uh, creating the card, uh, a couple of things happen. First of all, we get a, a marble texture here, which is similar to what we will get in this case, of course, not identical. Everyone has uh, a unique pattern, but you will get a pattern here. The image will still the same. And once you have that, an auction starts. In particular, in this particular case, uh, it is a Dutch auction. What does this mean? A Dutch auction starts from a very high price that presumably nobody will be ready to pay. And then with time, it decreases gradually uh, until it reaches a very minimal amount. And if at any given point there is somebody that feels that that price is good enough for them, they can make an offer and purchase for that price. And immediately they will purchase the good. In this case, they will purchase this marble card. So for instance, for 10 hours, 11 hours, whatever that amount is, I have this card on auction starting with a very high price. And then as time, time goes by, as time is running out, the price will decrease. Now, if somebody sees this card that I have created and wants to buy them, and say they want to buy them from 1,000 Matic, then 300 Matic will be my cut, because this is what it says here. Or if nobody buys the card, then I will win the card automatically. Now, there's also the other option when I can uh, bid on my own card because I'm very, very afraid that somebody else will take it. In that case, I get 30% discount on whatever uh, the price I decided to pay. Uh, now, we will see also this from another perspective, but what is interesting so far is that uh, there is this auction part and there is this way to create uh, a collectible. And this is very interesting because it allows uh, to reward the ingenuity of somebody that had an idea, oh, that page, that web page could be interesting to tokenize, that URL could be interesting to tokenize. So let's see another example. For instance, this is a page from uh, Emojipedia, and uh, this emoji that uh, I wanted to take as an example is the Italian flag. So if I take this URL and I try to make a marble card out of it, it will tell me, you'll see in a second, it will tell me that the card is already taken, that already does have an owner. So somebody has thought about it before me and I can look at the card and maybe it's for sale, maybe it's not for sale. Um, but what happens when cards are for sale on the auction as mentioned? So if imagine this card was just minted, we would see a card appearing here second we will see a card appearing here under library cards for sale and as you can see times this represents how much time is left for you to bid and the price goes hand in hand with the the, the time the higher the time the higher the price let's see this in more detail Oops, there we go. So this blue dot at the beginning was here at 10,000 Matic. The minimum will be 300 Matics. After 300 Matics, this card will be given, will be won by the creator. And this is the current price. If I refresh here, just check this number, if I refresh here, 
you will see that it's already less. It's already a bit less because as time goes by, the time, the price in, uh, decreases. So um, there are many interesting things about this, uh, these projects, but also there are some um, drawbacks. So I want to talk about a little bit of the pros and cons that I see. Uh, let's start with some of the cons first. But before we get into that, actually, one thing that I wanted to discuss with you is some of the attributes of the marble cards. So uh, the very first 33 cards had the Genesis attribute. So this is not anything that we can find in the cards that are being minted right now. Same goes for the origin, because these are the following 966 cards. And actually, all these other attributes, such as the card being gold or the card belonging to generation zero are all things that unfortunately are not there anymore for the new collectors coming into the space. Uh, we are already at generation one. Uh, we are probably minting uh, 89,000 cards at the time of recording, should be around that number. And uh, uh, there are also other characteristics that the card might have and can be useful. This characteristic can be useful during the game because let's remember that this is a trading card game. So there is the collectible aspect, but there is also the gaming aspect, where one card plays against another. Uh, and I will not go specifying the, 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 the game aspect uh, of this project, because I, in this channel, have more of a collector angle. Um, but cards have a level, and this level could also be important for the value of the card, and it stands from 1 to 100. Also because this level influences the behavior of the card in the game and the power of the card in the game. Uh, however, now that I have uh, sort of explained the characteristic of the project at a very high level, I want to discuss about some pros and cons. So one of the uh, cons that I see is that, as mentioned at the beginning, we are talking about a project that runs on the Matic um, uh, blockchain. The Matic blockchain, uh, yes, is rising very, very fast uh, in importance. It's becoming uh, more and more adopted as we speak, but it is still uh, very, very unknown to the vast majority of people. Um, and uh, the vast majority of NFTs are still minted on the uh, Ethereum blockchain and probably will be that way for a long time. So if we don't have super pristine and perfect and seamless interoperability, probably we will not see uh, immediate adoption uh, or as wide adoption as we see for other tokens or for other uh, projects. However, uh, this is the, the, the first one. It could be a pro or a con, depending if you are keen on early and early adopter or not. Another uh, con that I see is that uh, it is true that within the Marble Cards universe, that within this environment, there can only be one NFT associated with one URL. But it does not not mean that nobody else can have a similar idea outside of this universe. In other words, maybe somewhere else in another project, in another, or even on a different blockchain, somebody might be having a similar idea, building a similar project and creating exactly the same uh, pattern of associating a token, you can call it marble card or a different name, you know, it doesn't even, even matter, associating a token to a URL. Now, what we learned from the CryptoKitties experience is that typically in these scenarios, the very first project, the one that has the seminal idea, is the project that um, remains relevant for the longest time. Nobody today remembers about the hash puppies, the crypto zombies, and all those copycats in need of crypto kitties. But almost everyone in the uh, cryptocurrency space remembers of the craze that existed around crypto kitties. And some crypto kitties, uh, only some, unfortunately, still hold value because of that phenomenon, because of, of that craze that existed. Uh, however, the risk does exist that a new project will add the, an extra twist to this idea that will make it much more interesting, much more relevant. Uh, and uh, they will become the successful idea associated with the concept of minting a token for 
a specific URL. Um, another uh, con that I see is that it is still inconvenient for a given user to set up the MetaMask wallet in a certain way by the MATICs, uh, the, the Polygon tokens or MATIC tokens, depending on how you want to define them, uh, the same thing. There is this double branding for MATIC. Uh, but you need to, buy, to, to set up your wallet and buy specific tokens to do this specific action. And this can be pretty inconvenient. Now, if you think how the most successful projects in the space, such as Nifty Gallery, such as Maker's Place, they strive to make the tokens available in US dollars, specifically because they want to be as accessible as possible, you can understand that this level of friction could be a problem. At the same time, this could be very nice if you, as an early adopter, value this thing because you do have this informational advantage. You do own tokens, uh, you do own Matic tokens, you do know how to do all these things. And then in the anticipation of uh, the adoption curve uh, rising, uh, you would be ahead of the curve. Uh, but this is still a bet, right? Now, talking about the pros, uh, one gigantic pro that I see is that this is a very original idea and it could be very interesting to tokenize a URL for, for instance, a uh, uh, news article. There are many uh, mm, articles that you could tokenize from, for instance, the New York Times, from uh, Vice.com, uh, from uh, uh, Coindesk. Uh, uh, there are all sorts of uh, uh, news outlets that you could uh, uh, go to and say, mm, maybe this is a good idea to uh, tokenize this event. Uh, and why is that? Because an historical event typically, typically uh, depicted in uh, the headline of an article, which is published on, for instance, the New York Times, uh, would be something uh, nice to, to own, something nice to have a collectible for. If you think about people frame sometimes uh, uh, pieces of a newspaper when it's something particularly relevant to them. And this could be the equivalent in the uh, non-fungible tokens uh, uh, space uh, and have that unique piece that represents that event. Um, this use case as many other in terms of uh, collector's value. Um, another pro that I see is the fact that uh, the uh, way of uh, collecting this idea of having the Dutch auction, having people uh, buying uh, a token even though they did not mint it. So uh, buy a token from the primary market even though they did not mint it. I, I find it a very interesting idea because it drives at the same time more value and more users to uh, the space. Um, however, these are my thoughts about this. I'm not recommending uh, marble cards specifically. I don't recommend tokens in general. This is not investment advice, but I hope that this could be a viable tool for you to make your own research. And if that is the case, please remember to subscribe to the channel and to hit the like button. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.